Hi, this is Caleb, and today we're going to make beef tallow. Beef tallow, in case you didn't know, is simply rendered beef fat. Now, why would I want to tell you about rendered beef fat? And the answer is this. It's simply delicious. Uh, it's something that I love to cook with, uh, maybe not all the time, because uh, it does have a lot of saturated fat, um, but uh, for things like hash browns, it just tastes amazing. It elevates it so much more in terms of flavor uh, over and above vegetable oil. And one of my favorite things I like to do is simply grab a bag of frozen hash browns from uh, Fred Meyer or from Safeway and cook them in a mix of vegetable oil and beef tallow. And I'm telling you, the, the, cr the crispy exterior that you get and the flavor that you get from it is amazing. And so I wanted to show you uh, how you can render your own beef fat to make beef tallow. Now the things that you need for beef tallow are as follows. I have them all out. Of course, the first thing you need uh, is beef fat. And there's a couple of ways you can get beef fat. One is to uh, go to your butcher um, and they often will sell you beef fat. Uh, you might ask for uh, the kidney fat, which is the best and most purest fat uh, that you can get. But you can also, if you cook with a lot of beef um, over time, you can save up uh, the scraps of fat that you get from uh, from your roast, from your steaks, etc. And that's what I've done. So it's about a year's worth of beef fat that I've saved. Um, in fact, I bought a whole um, top loin uh, from Costco that had uh, quite a bit of fat covering it. And so uh, as I ate those steaks, I would cut off, uh, trim the fat basically, and just throw it into this Ziploc bag in the freezer so that now I can go ahead and make my tallow. All right, so I've got the gas on medium high, and I'm just going to start it off at medium high, but eventually I'm going to turn it down uh, lower because I don't want to overcook the tallow. I don't want any burnt uh, flavor imparted, uh, but at the start, I have it up higher just to get it going. And uh, it's real simple. I'm just going to add the tallow to the pan. You'll hear it start to sizzle, which is kind of fun if you like that. I'll just use a wooden spoon to stir it around. If you want, you can cut the tallow up in smaller pieces and that will help render the fat faster. Uh, also really quickly, whenever you're dealing with hot oil or fat, it's always worth it to invest in a quality pair of safety goggles. Uh, you never know if you get a splash, you wanna protect your eyes, so definitely do that. And here's just a closer look. So we look into the pan, you can see Happily, happily rendering. So here we are. You can see that it looks a lot different. A lot of the fat has now rendered. So the question is, how do you know when it's done? And I'm looking at the white parts of each of the chunks. So when those white parts start to disappear and it all starts to look brown, uh, that's how I know when it's rendered enough. So I'm not looking for you know, everything to just get to charcoal um, but I am looking for you can see that white bit there I'm looking for those to pretty much go away for the most part because that is still some good fat that needs to be rendered at this point I've turned it down to low I don't need it high anymore it's just going to kind of simmer and render a lot more gently one thing you'll notice as you do this is uh, it smells up the whole house, uh, so just beware that when you decide to do your rendering, you're going to get quite a bit of aroma that comes. And actually, you don't mind it. It smells a little bit, uh, certainly beefy, 
a little bit like a steakhouse. Certainly a lot better than rendering pork fat for lard. All right, now at this point, uh, we can see that most of the white parts are gone, so we're pretty much done. So at this point, I'm gonna turn off the heat and we're gonna proceed through our straining process. All right, step one is to strain. So I'm gonna put on some oven mitts because the pot's gonna be pretty hot. And I wanna be careful, of course, uh, pouring out the uh, fat that's been rendered so I've got my stainless steel bowl ready along with a strainer. And again, I'm gonna strain this twice. So the first strain is just to really get the big chunks out of the way. So I've got my pan here. I'm just gonna pour carefully right into the strainer. And you can see all the gristle coming. And just pour it all in there. It's gonna have a nice golden color by the time it cools, it's gonna cool into more of a white color. There we go, it's strained up, and I will go ahead and remove this, and then I'll proceed with the second strain. Now, for my second strain, I'm gonna go ahead and take that same strainer. This time, I'm gonna line it up with cheesecloth. Like, what I like to do is get some unbleached cheesecloth, and you can get that from Amazon. It's about four layers thick, and that will remove all of the rest of the impurities from the beef fat. So I'm going to take my previous bowl. I'm just going to dump it carefully uh, through the cheesecloth, through the strainer, and all of the rest of the impurities and sediments are going to be filtered out uh, by the cheesecloth. And so I'll have a nice, pure beef tallow that will then last longer on the shelf because of the purity. Finish the strain, and what I'm left with is pretty good beef fat. And you can go ahead and look at the consistency. If you see some more uh, sediments, go ahead and strain it again if you'd like. All right, so now I have my strained beef tallow, and as you can see, it's, it's a golden color, but it'll solidify uh, at room temperature and it will turn white. And I have a mason jar here, so I'm just going to go ahead and pour it in. And I didn't make a very large batch this time, but if you obviously if you start with more beef fat, you can make uh, as large as batch as you want. You can make a few mason jars at a time, depending on how much beef fat you have. And that's about it. I've got my top here. I'm gonna go ahead and seal it up. And since I'm planning to use this, I'm gonna just keep it on the counter and have some delicious hash browns. Well, there you have it, YouTube beef tallow rendered at home, uh, something that's pretty easy to do. It uh, takes about an hour or two, depending on how much beef fat you're rendering. But again, something that you can use uh, to add excellent flavor to potatoes, vegetables, etc. A little goes a long way, but you won't be disappointed, especially with hash browns. Well, that's it. Peace until next time.